So, Arigi, are you ready? Yeah, so now in fact that I mean Mr. me let us out Vizuri and I can see people. So I'll be able to put you live uh so that you can uh, talk to us and tell us the future of cinema in Africa. Uh considering what's happening with uh, the coronavirus right now, a lot of people are going live. Uh you remember our film we were supposed to 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 premiere. <laughs> we say two weeks to the COVID crisis. And now yeah. we're like, uh, what do we do? Do we sell it on VOD? What do what what is the next uh, thing to do? And uh, this is not just a crisis for us. This is a crisis for quite a number of people, and we don't know how long this is going to be. Amako yeah. Bawala is a medic, and she will come and tell us uh, the depth of this crisis, uh, looking at the current situation. But I just want you to talk to us about the future of uh, cinema, considering that 93 Days is a film that was done. Yeah. Uh, about the crisis, you know, putting the crisis in film so that people can understand and uh, people can un understand the depth of uh, the, the crisis and the depth of this uh, epidemic. So we just, as a filmmaker, season one, uh, we want you to be able to share your experience as in uh, what do you think, uh, even uh, as mild as uh, the depth of uh, this crisis has not yet uh, set uh, into our lives. We have not really felt the impact of this thing yet. I think uh, we are going to feel the impact in the next uh, few months. But yeah. what exactly do you foresee is going to change in the film industry? And what what do you think we can do about it? Okay. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I hope now everyone can hear me because Zipi, I can hear you so well. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we have a pandemic right now, and everyone else now is getting entertained online. People f people are trying to find a spot where they can at least forget what is happening. And I think that's where now uh, African film, uh, the, the step we are, we are going to take after all this, because right now, Everyone has gone through a little bit of something, be it financially. Look at the women in the villages, not even villages, even here. Uh, I think it's, it, we, we are going to be in a position now to start reaching out through the, the creative bit that we have. We start reaching out to everyone to educate them on what is really happening. And we have to do that either on social media, on any platform available. Like you see the president said now, we'll have the Google loans, <laughs> Google loans that will be, will be flying all over. What of that person in the village? Maybe that person doesn't have the internet or maybe that person has internet. So you see, uh, it's also going to be very, very interesting. I, I say interesting because now, we are literally going to be talking languages that people understand. Here we are talking English, but there's somebody in the village who doesn't even know what COVID-19 is. Then you go tell this person you have to sit at home. So how well can this person be told we have to come back again to the creatives now, but we go back to the languages that we, we have been shying away from. I say that so much because we've not educated our audience who are also in the villages on what we do, how it is done. So now we need to, we will go back there now and start educating them in a language they understand and in ways they understand so that they, they take it serious. Right now, everything, every time we are waiting for breaking news, we are waiting for update. What of that person in the village? Who is getting that message to that person? Who is telling that person? So I think with, all this pandemic, uh, as creatives, we also need now to start thinking. Our audience, are our audience only in the cities? No. In fact, I say majority are in the other counties that we, we don't reach out to. Everyone there wants to come to Nairobi, but w what if we take this to them? It will, it will save a lot, and then they'll be more educated. They'll have this information through art, because through art, something sticks in the head. But if you go verbally, all the time you are saying it, somebody forgets. But when somebody sees exactly the depth of what you are saying, the implications, if I get out and do this, I'll have this. You, it, it can't be in pictures, it can't be in anything, but let it be something that somebody can see. 
and internalize and listen to and internalize and sit back again and think. So I think right now as a creative, uh, I'll, I'm really thinking of how well can these messages be communicating to those people in the villages, those people who don't have access to television so that they sit and wait, those people who don't have radios, how well will they get this information at some point or be it after or even now? Because now we have to think we have to think broadly. We really have to think broadly, not only we want to take it to the cinemas. Let's find a way of getting these things to people in their houses, because they are viewers. Let us take whatever we are doing to them in wherever they are. But as we are doing that too, we have to also be in that environment that they are in, because there's no way I'll tell somebody, I get somebody maybe from Mombasa to speak Swahili, shoot everything in Mombasa, and then expect somebody in the village there to understand this. But if I'm in that environment and I, I show what is really happening, they'll relate with the surrounding they are in. So I think as creatives, everything now, we really have to broaden ourselves. There's enough space. We have a lot of stories. We have a lot of information to give out there. Because there's even a side from, from UN, they need creatives now to come in and help in passing the COVID-19 messages. So you can see how impactful it's going to be because sitting in, in, like now I'm sitting down in my house in Nairobi, I'll make a call to somebody in the village, do not go outside, is that enough? No, this person will just say, okay, you are in Nairobi, they're seated, telling me you not know, to come out, but I need to feed. So how well, we need to really think how well we can use the little, the, the, the much we know the much information we have, and how well we can package, packet, pa package this to the people back in the village. I think that, that, to me, African film now is going to every area of this continent, and we have to, let's be realistic, let's speak, let's pass information in languages that we relate to. Let's tell even our stories in languages we relate to. We, uh, let me give you an example, even if you watch uh, the movie we are, we are talking about now, I watched it a while back, but I was impressed because everything, they speak in their dialect, they put the subtitles there, somebody understands. This is a hospital, they are speaking in a language, somebody will understand how gross whatever is happening is and why somebody needs to do something. There's a way they explain it, they use any language possible for somebody to understand how bad this is and why people have to be isolated. So I think sometimes we also divert a bit and focus on, on English, but if we have to pass this information, some information can just come out well in a language we understand, be it Luo, be it Kikuyu, be it any language somebody understands. I think that will help a lot and Myself as a creative, I'm, I'm thinking on that line. I'm really thinking of, let me go back, do the, the films or whatever I'm talking about in a language and in an environment this, the people who I'm talking about will understand because it will change a lot of mindset, be it here or even outside there. So that stuff like somebody coming and making us guinea pigs, like now I'm here in France, somebody was saying they come test the, the, the what? the injection on Africans, which is, that, that's another thing now, because why, why do they think it's easier to come that way? And how well as creatives, how can we stop that? By educating our people, showing them why this is wrong, because so, some things are, are created for us, they're just not us. So let us go with what is us, so that everyone will embrace who we are, what we stand for, and how well we are also existing. We are, we, are, we are all existing here. So I think that that is where our creativity now will be diverting to, speaking in a language we understand. Let us give our audiences, our viewers, our, our communities something that they relate to, something they will understand, something that will communicate with them so well. I think to be, that is that. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Arigi. That's very insightful. You know, like it truly, you've touched on something that uh, a lot of us who are in the city are not focusing on. People at home, they do not have the Netflix that you're talking about, and they do not have all these YouTube, but they need the message go getting home to them right away. 
I can see Paul Waidaka is also there. Paul, I don't know if you, you'd like to say something. Hi, Paul. I can hear you. Arigi, let me remove you so that I put Paul, uh, we can see his face, then he can tell us something. Uh, Paul, talk to us. Hi, everyone. How, how is everybody doing? Hope you're staying safe. Uh-huh. Uh, I like what the last caller just said, and I remember one time listening to the famous Gogi Wadiongo saying, if we were taught uh, in our mother tongue, whether whether it's chemistry or all those hard subjects, Africa will be in the same league as a developed world. And so I totally believe, and uh, somebody else also said, if you speak to... Uh, somebody in their own mother tongue, you speak to their heart. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally agree. I wish I, I wish I could do it in Kikuyu. I'm actually struggling right now. Yeah. I'm looking over Kembu Hospital from where I'm seated. And I'm uh -huh. watching people just walking, you know, without nothing to protect themselves. Uh -huh. uh, it, it, it's scary. It, it is scary. So as a creative, I'm thinking, what, what are those PSI we could we could do out there? Yes. So uh, we can communicate fully to our to our people. And, and I think uh, that, go ahead, Zippy. Uh, Paul, you see, right now you're you're one of the people who is uh, starting a school on a film school, uh, and right now Corona is making us not be able to shoot yet. Uh, the world is depending on the film and the music and generally the entertainment industry to keep us alive at home. Uh, what exactly do you think is the future of these students? <laughs> talk, talk about talk about bad omen. I, I, I just enrolled my first uh, term. Uh -huh. uh, of, you know, I had about 10, ten students. They were so excited. There's a film school in Kiambu. Mm -hmm. Then Corona happened. So I'm here, as you can see me in the, in the whole school all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my. so if there's somebody who is mad uh, with this Corona thing, it's me. I can tell you that. <laughs> You're not alone. You're not alone. Simiyu, I can see Simiyu. This is... Uh, you know, this crisis has put a lot of us in quite uh, a very difficult situation. I'm yes. hoping that once all this is over, we shall be able to create movies not just about uh, the disease, but about how it has uh, affected operations and businesses, because there are a lot of stories that can really come out of this. And uh, just looking at you in your office, I know a friend who opened a salon just the other day and then it closed. Of course, as we wanted to premiere, and then there it was, as in this thing, you know, <laughs> that thing of like when you try to count your losses, and when you hear, and then you you can only consult yourself when you hear that uh, the other person is also crying. You know, misery loves company. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we are about 24 of us right now at this time of the day. Yeah, you know, I, I for me, I think uh, the first three days or after that news, I. I think I, I, can, I can easily say I went into depression or I almost went into one because I didn't know where to start. But then, uh, you know, you realize uh, the world must go on, as in you're breathing, you're alive, uh, you're like, I mean, uh, all happens for the good of those who love God anyway. So you never know. Yeah. So, the spining uh, zippy. Yeah. Uh, with this corona thing, you know, there are those scripts, maybe one has, you know, I'll be saying I want to do a, a script for a certain movie that I have in my head. Yes. So uh, this is also an opportunity for me to do that. Yes. So maybe when this corona is uh, all over, yeah, we will have a lot of uh, producers out there working on stuff. <laughs> so there's a <deep> lightning. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. That's true. Have you watched the film? This, this, the film uh, 93 Days About Ebola and it's very deep. Uh, and and then when we look at how it's handling the situation, it's trying to put a crisis. But uh, what I love about it is it's Africans trying to put in an African story 
in our way. You know, what I love that story is that it was told from the African perspective, you know, our challenges, uh, the ones that we face. And uh, I remember one scene specifically where all the drivers, all the ambulance drivers refused to go uh to take uh people from the homes to the hospitals because they were too scared that they would get ebola and so one of the head of the transport in all these hospitals called them and asked them what would you do for your country you know i have this uh word that i, I wrote uh, he said who will stand with us to keep the city safe by taking the patients to yaba yaba was the the place where the emergency hospital had been put and uh when when i look at that right now People are talking about the people, uh, how do I call it, uh, that there are services that uh, have to keep running. And uh, we forget that it is the drivers, the ambulance drivers, the hospital cleaners. It is these people whom we never really give so, so much respect. The watchmen, who has to be at that gate and ensure that everybody is using the sanitizer and is washing their hands before they go into the hospitals and into the offices. It is the casual laborers who are cleaning every space. And these are the people whom we never really give that much uh, focus. And here they are right now. And you see, when that was brought in the film, I was like, wow, this film has touched the core of our, of our situation, of our African pride, of our humanity, you know, but the people whom we never thought would respect that much are the ones who are now in charge. They're the ones who are now ensuring that everybody is safe. Look at the nurses, the nurse aides. Uh, because, uh, you see, when you hear about corona, people are um, they are having many, many problems. But somebody has to clean up the space. Somebody has to cook for them. And we have to ensure that these people are taken care of. So right now we are having a situation whereby they have to leave the office at five because they have to take care of somebody at the hospital or at the office. But the police still has to beat them. And this is uh, it's very serious is that we all understand that they need to get home on time so that everyone is safe. But we also understand that this person was trying to trust somebody else. Yeah. Yes, Arigi. Yeah, I can see you, Paul. Yes, uh, the Pacific. Yes. Any any last words that you have to say before you you leave the the screen? Uh, I I think the only thing I, I would say I, I think this is a is a challenge to each and every one of us. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the Ubuntu philosophy. Mm -hmm. You are because I am, and and, yeah. I, and I also remember listening to Angari Madai talking about the hummingbird. Yes. And I want to say, and I'm challenging a group that I belong to, that this is our hummingbird, hummingbird moment. There's one little thing that you and me can do right now. Yes. Uh, uh, right now, I'm, I'm overlooking the Kiambu Community Hall. Yes. Uh, when I was growing up, that's where we used to go uh, do the little dancing, but that way, that's where I had my first kids and everything like that. But the, right now, <laughs> it's an empty shell, and nobody cares. And so yesterday, I spent the whole of yesterday trying to convince the, the county that we can use that place as a, as a food pantry, as a dry food pantry, that people of means can donate dry food. And we keep it there for the next two weeks. This thing is going to hit uh, really hard in the next few weeks. I'm, I'm an optimist, but you know, I'm also a realist. <laughs> so it's gonna it's gonna hit us be really, really hard. And so if we start planning, I know you can afford an extra packet of Unga ZP and everybody who is here. Then we can put that in that print, locked up that we can start helping the need. It's gonna come to that point. But telling you to get that approval, it's like pulling my own teeth, but I'm still pushing. Uh, yeah. hopefully we'll get an answer in the coming week and see how we can use that. But I, I, I believe uh, we all have uh, a lot to pray in this and uh, help, help help the other person who, who is maybe out of job. Uh, yeah, it's a Ubuntu time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. In Diego, I'll bring you back uh, shortly uh, so that at least you you gi gi give us uh, more thoughts. Um, as a mother, <laughs> as a mother in this crisis, besides being a filmmaker, <laughs> 
<laughs> but before you go on, uh, Joy and Jerry says, what I loved about 93 days, I loved how it brought out the culture of the place and uh, just made it so authentic. Creativity in Africa needs a lot of authenticity, which I feel will bring in a lot of new and different stories and ways of understanding and seeing different cultures. Joy also says she loves how musicians pick up issues and seeing a few songs educating people what we need to do. Truly, I, th I think that's quite commendable. We've had a few, even uh, Kenyan musicians who've uh, done some songs telling people how to wash their hands, how to, you know, keep safe and stay at home. And, and that's quite uh, good because uh, with such kind of music, we can be sure we can reach far and wide. Yeah. And Diego, back to you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm back again. Okay. As a mother, uh, it's it's a bit difficult. I'm a mother of, of teens and a, a small girl. And I see my small girl getting frustrated because all the time, don't go out. Where are you? Zaria, come here. But yeah. we also we also have to find a way of communicating to them to understand. Yes, they're children, but we also have to find a way to communicate to them and understand. Secondly, as a creative, I'm, I'm thinking I, I know... Simu Baraza is here, but there's something that happened today. It's online and everyone is laughing at it. Yeah. But Simu Baraza wrote something about it that really made sense. We are creatives, yes. But we are creatives. I know in this sector we have comedians and everything. So let's not push this comedy so far. It is not comedy right now. This is not comedy. So how we package whatever information we want people to get also is very important. I'll give an example of what what happened. Um, a guy dressed in a Maasai regalia, whipping people that they should be meters apart, but this guy has no protective gear. He's coughing in the process. He's spitting blood. He's spitting... He's spitting. So you can imagine, is he helping or even worsening the situation? Yeah. But if, if, if he goes there and dresses in the right way, like have the mask, maybe wear gloves, and just find a way to talk to these people, they will listen. So we also, as creatives, we also have to start thinking. Their music, yeah, but if I make music that people will think of dancing to and not listening to my message, would, have, would I have passed any message to these people? No. So let us give serious information. Let us have serious discussion. We can use our phones from home and record. Since now we can't go out there and shoot whatever information we, we have. We can shoot these things. We can record our voices in our own dialects and spread it out there so that when it reaches that person in the village, that person will get the message. We'll, yeah. we'll actually get the message. Thank you, Zipu. Asante sana. Uh, Judy Mwaniki, I can see you here. I'd like to hear what you have to say about the film and just about your perspectives. Uh, Judy. Uh, hello. Hello. I'm trying to run away from my baby. So Don't I haven't worry, watched the movie fun. yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I haven't watched it yet. But yeah. I don't know, from what I'm hearing you guys saying, it's very nice and it, I can re I can like relate to it as an African woman. Yes. I think that's all I'll say. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I, but I, I plan to watch it and I look forward to, to getting more of, of, I mean, understanding it more. Uh, maybe in a general perspective, what, what is uh, your opinion about what the government is doing? Do you think they're doing enough to inform us of uh, the situation at hand? Okay, I, th I think they're trying. But uh, I, I think there are still some gaps and a lot needs to be done. Because, um, I mean, like the way they're saying now from Monday, there'll be all the, if you're boarding a matatu or a tuk-tuk or a motorbike, you have to, to, to have a mask. And they said in the next few days, they're going to provide masks. But yeah. how many yeah. people maybe can afford these masks? And there, there was a proposition from Nakuru today, the, the county government of Nakuru, they were saying that if this mask could be made very available to, to all, in, even in the marketplaces everywhere, and for as low as 10 shillings, so that most people can afford and maybe be more protected. I think in terms of information, 
there's 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 a trial but i think there's still more needs to be done in for every age group teenagers for the youths like us and also the older generation hi can you hear me hello 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 Hello. 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 You 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 can oh you can't see me but you, I I want to believe that you could hear me. Uh yeah. so, yes. Yes. So uh, I'm saying the government the audio. But I, I, I could you hear me? Yeah, no, I can hear you fully well. <laughs> oh. Okay, yes. I think I'd finish saying what I was saying. All right. Then we'll, trying to like leave i i wasn't hearing oh, anyone okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, so we are can you feel free to join be live and when you join be live then we, you can uh, join using the link that i've posted down there you can join our conversations using that link but first we have to join the live app so kindly feel free to 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 join this conversation and to join me on this screen because this is about sharing ideas and sharing thoughts and that's what we want to have today so what I was saying is what sometimes uh, the, like right now people are saying like are, the, are they sure what the government is telling them is the truth at hand? We saw last week, it was Friday night when uh, Honorable KJ told us about his fears and everybody went wild and everybody was scared like this press is really big. And we saw when he was called again by the uh, DCI to investigate what exactly he was talking about and uh, before we knew it everything had gone uh, slow and silent because the government is trying to to put the crisis um, uh, to take it slow so that people are not shocked by too much information yes we want the truth yes but how are we going to take it we have to be given the government has to take precaution in how it's giving it to us uh, but generally, I think as human beings and as citizens of the country, we have the right to to information. And if somebody feels that they need all that information, it's important to give them all that information as they want it. Uh, and another thing that we know we are facing a crisis right now is that we do not have masks. So we do not know what is the government doing about this. When we do not have masks, what exactly is it going to provide us with masks? We saw the other day the government said it's going to provide us with more, more sanitizers. But has it reached your estates? And those are the politics of health that we're talking about. The government is producing sanitizers, which it says it's giving people for free. But where exactly are they giving it for free? So when we look at all these chances, we're like, okay, are you? Uh, has anyone in your surrounding? uh gotten the free sanitizer that it says it's giving everyone are they being given out in front of the supermarket uh in the slum areas in the rural settlements who is getting these free sanitizers so we need to be able to understand all these where is this politics of health getting us it is not just about what we are being told it is also about what exactly is it being done and uh, as citizens are we feeling safe in this at this moment are we um, are, are we feeling that the government you know, are we protecting our fellow people but also when you look at the leadership that we are having 
is the leadership uh, trying to protect us? Is uh, the leadership, and we're not just talking about government leadership. If you're looking at the leadership, we look at our organizations. Some people are having uh, uh, wage cuts, salary cuts. Uh, the leadership in your institution, is it caring about whether you're going to survive the next one month or not? Or uh, what exactly, what measures is it doing? Because we have got quite a number of organizations which we know that truly they cannot be able to sustain their employees when there's no flow of revenue. But when you have a, an established organization that can be able to sustain the flow of revenue, but right now they cannot give you even 50% of your pay, then is the leadership of that organization caring for uh, the welfare of, uh, of, 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 of its employees? So those are things that uh, we need to discuss. If you'd like to join the conversation, uh, kindly feel free to click on that link, but first need to sign up for the BeLive, sign up for the BeLive app, and after you sign up for the BeLive app, then uh, click on that guest link and I'll be able to put you to talk to us. Uh, if you'd like, uh, the BeLive app is, um, is equal, well, let me just send it to you direct. Uh, let me just send it to you direct. Uh, Join be live, be live using the above link. Above link, then you can you can join the conversation. Uh, another thing I'd like to talk about when I say in the ninety-three days is the uh, hope. Uh, yesterday we were given hope because I mean, as human beings, we need hope. And uh, if you look at uh, 93 days, uh, the Dr. Ag Agono, Agono, I think, is the one who, uh, who uh, Igono, Dr. Ada Igono, so the one who, who recovered. And right now, the number of people who get uh, corona, uh, we know that the world over, at least 90% um, recover. And yesterday, we got our first sign of hope. And uh, this is what we need. We need more news of hope. We need more news of people who are recovering, more news of people who are not having it very, who are not having a very severe attack of corona. And how are we supposed to get this information? As citizens, I think it is important for us not to over-criticize some information because not everybody gets a severe attack of corona. And if we are lucky that the first patient who came out public did not get a severe attack of corona, then we should be able to accept it and to be able to appreciate that at least we got that information. And even right now, we, we feel very sorry that uh, the Kenya Airways uh, main pilot was uh, uh, the died and even his co-pilot uh, is in ICU. And we are feeling like there's a lot of information that's being put aside for us. See me, you, I can see you. We are ready for you. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, uh, there, there's quite uh, a, a lot of information that's being given to us, but we, should, we know right now that people are home and we are depressed by, uh, because we're not, we're depressed just by the fact that we our sense of freedom has been curtailed, and and for some of us, we don't, we have never known how to be still. But I know we are trying to unlearn some of these things that we have known before. And uh, in 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 this in this crisis, we ask ourselves, how do we embrace this information that we are given? How do we absorb this information? Because when we are given news as it is, how do we embrace it? So uh, I'd like to give uh, Simiu Barasa a chance so that he can talk to us and tell us this the place of film, especially in such a crisis, what is the place of film in such a crisis? What is the space uh, and the power of creatives in such a crisis? Yeah. Simiu, the chance is yours. Hi, hi. I can see you, but I see everybody's complaining about that. So I guess you're the only one who can see us. I can see you now. All right, all right. Um, so the question is, um, what's the place of creatives, right? Yeah. 
I'm going to talk about um, first as filmmakers. Huh? And filmmakers, we have the uh, entertainment part of it. So like uh, Arigi said, it's okay to make entertainment because people are going to be bored. People are already bored in their houses and uh, they, they, they'll have a lot of time to watch. So it's the time to create, you know, content that is fun, content that is just for, you know, make people feel happy, not to feel claustrophobic so much. Comedies, songs, poems. I've seen people reading their poems to each other online. I've seen DJs, for example, um, doing live gigs online, which is good because it keeps people having the faith and people feeling entertained. Uh, shout out to DJ Richie. I've watched some of it. And another DJ called uh, DJ Sylvia online. I saw her too. I've been listening to their music list. But then again, there's the also the part of edut edutainment, right? But in as much as you're doing the content, to there are people who will do fun. It's not always fun 100%. There are people who also do content that is meant to educate the people. Um, if you're a guy who's doing, um, like if you're a Photoshop guy, a designer, it's nice to make some few, you know, uh, infographics, posters that you can share around. I saw one about, which came early on, I think, like two, three weeks ago, and I didn't find out who actually did it. But it went around very viral because everybody was like, oh, wow, all this complex medicine jargon, all these complex uh, governmental directives have just been done in a very simple way on that uh, infographic, and it was easier to understand. I also think, like, what you're doing right now is very important, keeping artists together, networking with uh, various industry professionals to be able to share information, which kudos to you, uh, Zippy. Um, a good example, for me, if I speak like what I've been doing so far, as in I've been holding the house, and then I learned of a new software called, of a software, not a new one, just because I learned it as a new one doesn't mean it's new, uh, OBS, and then using Skype, and we've been able to network with a couple of doctors and health professionals and professionals from all over the world to be able to make short video podcasts about wellness during like Corona times. And I was very happy because it's something that I've never done before, shooting rem remotely, recording it and editing it remotely. And I felt very gratified that in my simple way as a filmmaker, I'm contributing towards knowledge to the Corona times. So I think there are two levels in which artists can get involved and the role of art and especially film. Entertainment purposes, keeping people happy, and educative purposes, keeping people informed. But like Arigi said, you have to be aware of two things. Sometimes if the message is not packaged well, it can end up having a boomerang effect, like that Maasai video that she has talked about. And then secondly, um, as artists, we must also be careful not to spread a lot of panic, especially during these time times. It's good to have... Um, factual information, but if you're spreading information that is not verified, even if we call ourselves creatives, you cannot be creative with numbers of fatalities, you cannot be creative about plans that are being done, you cannot be creative about telling people this is the kind of medicine that you can use, you cannot be creative in spreading rumors, that's not creativity, that's basically mis misusing your platform and your powers as a creative to spread more alarm, that's propaganda, thank you. Hey Zippy. Yeah, so something I have noted is that uh, right now we have got a lot of actors. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's like everyone is now an actor and everyone is now a producer and a director. People are having a lot of videos uh, they're shooting in their houses and some of them you ask yourself, okay, we know we all want to be famous, but uh, what's your perception of everybody just trying to create something because they are home and idle? Oh, no, I think it's very good because, you see, who knows? Um, they'll discover something in them that they never knew they had. Eh? <laughs> I mean, artistry is not exactly an exclusive club. Eh? Um, so there's the joy in, like, I'm seeing people, the same way guys are discovering that they can cook, for example. They're trying new recipes. They can sing, you know, because they're singing to, to themselves in their bathrooms. Yeah. I think it's healthy when people... Um, explore the tools that they have, especially now that they are at home alone and with a lot of time in their hands. Out of those, we may discover a couple of great actors, great, and it would be nice to say, you know, I once was a banker, but during the corona times I was at home. And now I'm winning an Oscar, so I dedicate this <laughs> award to Facebook because it exhibited my talents during the corona times. It would be a good story, so let people try it out. 
there's one thing that I wanted to say, now that you're speaking about everybody being an actor and all that. Um, one of the other roles of us as artists is to make sure that we stay alive through this period in order to continue with our craft. If you look at poets, there's always been a big debate, uh, like Christopher Kibo in Nigeria went to the Biafran War and died and robbed the whole uh, world of um, his poetry. And for me, I'm not so concerned about the people who are acting at home. I am concerned about the people who are actually now still on set, you know, shooting. I mean, minus the fact that they are disobeying the government directive. I mean, um, it's not a critical service that you have to be on set. I mean, you know the pressures on a set, right? People are yeah. talking from close range. People are shouting. People are, you know, having physical contact, wrestling, for example, or if it's a fight scene. And I'm wondering, these producers who are sending actors on set at such times, do they think that corona is a joke? Mm. Don't they see that in a set, I mean, one person with it is actually going to spread to so many people and we might lose a lot of our good talent just because somebody somewhere is thinking it's a joke. So another role of the artist is to maintain the sanity and sanctity of life, not just for yourself, but for every member around you, by adhering to the... Uh, procedures of protection and um, to be able to not infect others. I think that's the most important thing, first and foremost, before you even think of yourself as an entertainer or as a bathroom rapper. I, I, I want to ask you a very political question. <laughs> yes. Sir. Uh, you, you have seen, uh, starting with uh, Dr. Alfred Motua, who, yeah, yeah. who is an, a PhD doctor in his own right. Yes, Bashing yeah, yeah. up PhD old holders and mm. telling them that if they are doctors, why? What are they doing right now in such a crisis? And uh, this, this person got me uh, because I, I am also a PhD holder. And <laughs> <laughs> why well, we not invented Corona? <laughs> and, and and right now I, I'm thinking, okay, I can do something about drama therapy for those people who have uh, already survived Corona, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just thinking, the government does not have uh, funds that are flowing for research currently. We can uh, bash the, uh, the doctors, uh, the, 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 the researchers, the biomedics, as much as we want, but research is expensive. And uh, even as uh, Mutua says that he has already put up a lab, a lab is a house. He, he says that uh, people did the greatest inventions in their houses. But it was oh. not just greatest inventions. Those people had equipment. They had things that they needed. Right now, with the advancement in technology, the government, we feel that they have not had enough resources. We do not have enough research labs. And mm. even um, the patenting um, boards, when a Kenyan discovers any new invention medically or scientifically mm -hmm. the first thing is like are you sure and before we know it when the government is still asking are you sure we hear that another state maybe america or europe yeah. or china has already patented that so what is your check on this well my take is um we have to be careful we have also to realize that there are two alfred mutuas eh? yeah there's one who got his PhD very many years back. <laughs> and one who for the past 10, 15 years of his life has become a politician. Yeah. Now the politician part of it is what enables him to confidently, you know, uh, make statements that are widely popular, but hollow, very extremely hollow in substance. Mm -hmm. Such that uh, when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, by the way, why are they not inventing? But when you look at it critically, right, is in a government and part of a nation of government and even the Machakos government that are, has generally over the past 20 years um, not given academicians the capacity to be able to do what is demanded of them. If you look at the funding that stopped right from the SAPs, it means that uh, a lot of the PhD holders do not have the funds to actually do the research they want. If you look at even a simple thing like accommodation, a lot of uh, our university lecturers are not accommodated at home. I mean, at, at the university. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have to be at home. And you're telling that person to do a highly sensitive uh, research, for example, on a vaccine. A vaccine is not cooking chapati. 
Mudokoi, or, or, or which might be a better um, analogy now that is in Matakos. It's you need security, you need security for that kind of work that you're doing, you need protection. I mean, how many <laughs> equipment has been given to our scholars to be able to do that? You are doing a great job with your PhD uh, because now you're doing this continuation of that process. Have you been enabled by any government? Right? Have you been enabled by uh, he, he, in Machakos itself, the, the, the filmmaking center? So called, has he enabled them to be able to produce films or pass on online information during these corona times? Mm -hmm. So it's, we have to ignore such kind of statements when they come out of his uh, political side because they are nice. And um, I'm having Maziomala, so don't laugh. Eh? It's Maziomala actually. <laughs> Because See, I don't it, it, it does not matter what you have in your cup. What matters is that you can drink something at this time. No, somebody might be thinking of <laughs> out of the book. No. But the, the reality is we cannot blame our scholars when we've not enabled them. If you look at them, um, and then the second thing is COVID is a new virus, right? It's too early for you to start calling out people. I mean, all those lab research that has been going on in countries like Italy, Germany, uh, Germans are at the forefront now, even Israelis and even the Chinese. They're confronting a new virus based on what they were able to break down and uh, genetically break down the components out of the Ebola virus and all the other viruses. Yet for all the years of research, they've still been caught off guard. So why does Mutua think that uh, a Kenyan can wake up one day and in two days produce a corona um, virus when labs in Germany are finding new information every day when they're decoding the genetic um, composition of that um, Mm -hmm. virus. I was looking at a Japanese research, which was like uh, two days ago, right? Uh, yeah. It was using filmmakers. It was using very high-end filmmaking equipment. So filmmakers were working together with doctors. Because a doctor had come up with a um, hypothesis that COVID is not just um, contact transmission, that it's also transmitted by, through the air. And so they put them in a lab with high-speed cameras, that could uh, get the droplets in the air and see how they operate. And so they put two people sneezing, then they put a person talking to the other one. And guess what? They actually saw that the virus can stay up to 10 minutes in the air for a distance of six meters. That's new information that came out two days ago from people who've been studying this virus equipped with high-end cameras, equipped with proper labs, equipped with a state pay over the past 10 years. And they just discovered that I mean, like uh, within this week. And then, political purpose. This is not a Mwomboko dance. You beat a drum now and everybody starts dancing. It's high end research and governments have to work on it. And I think the point that will be driven back to him is they have to invest a lot of money in academicians and academic institutions and personnel if we are going to extract the same kind of demands that they are extracting right now during the coronavirus. They should not use the pandemic to get political mileage and uh, sound bites that we have wasted 15 minutes talking about when you know they are all over. Thank you. Yeah, which is very true. Uh, because, because, you know, one thing uh, I always like using this example, like research is like a cuckoo's experimenting in the kitchen where every time you try to add one spice and when it's not working, you have to pour out the food, not giving it to people to eat. You pour yeah. out the food. And so you can even pour out even 20 recipes. And that is what makes it expensive. It's not like somebody will just test once and it works. And that's the that's one thing that people do not really want to understand that research is not expensive in terms of it. You need this and it will work out. It's because it's a trial and error and you never know how many times you're going to try. And the every time you try, you need something new. Time investment. Yeah. Time investment. Time investment. It's not an overnight thing. And then one of the things you can actually ask him right now is let's say there's a guy of respiratory issues eh, who wants to do a research on uh, whether the African lungs of the natives living in um, Kenya, Israel, in Ukambani can be able to breathe without ventilators. So to do a controlled experiment, right? Mm -hmm. Are there ventilators in that uh, Machakos County that one can use right now <laughs> so that uh, one can come up with a proper deduction of whether it's true or not? Yeah. Would have so really we, we we are just taking political mileage at these times, which is wrong. Let us finish this virus period, and then look back and have such debates. And I'm sure he, he, his PhD will be taken to task 
because of uh, making such uh, blanket statements. Let's hope he has enough funds to do enough sensitization movies within Machakos because he is, uh, his PhD is in communication. Uh, however, he failed me by instead of uh, trying to beg the PhD holders, he ended up abusing them and scattering words that are not very enticing. As a communication yeah. expert, he should have used words that appeal and make people want to really go to the lab and do their thing. Yeah, so but yeah. anyway. In that sense, also, his PhD did quite work well because he ended up uh, <laughs> spiriting and irritating a lot of uh, professional medical doctors and uh, researchers who felt, well, where, who could have taken him on and asked him, well, the capacity is fast not there, the capacity is looked down upon. Mm -hmm. Even protective gear right, right now is missing. So how do you do research on such a thing like a virus when there's no protective gear from the, ver for the very right, for, for the exact the the right, right now? So, in that way, um, his PhD for communication, actually. He should have communicated better. So, it's a I, symptom I, of thinking that he's blaming others. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to assume that he also has depressed as many of the Kenyans, and uh, so he's blurting out of words uh, was okay. a, a consequence of that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's take him at that value then. Uh, yeah, these are confusing times. Everybody's just seeking for answers. And, uh, no, everyone wants to vent. <laughs> coming desperate, uh, let, yeah. let me read a few words here. Jerry is saying uh, she likes the feature. Uh, I like a feature Caroline Mutoko had, and she was explaining uh, how the world needs more masks, and uh, she also likes how the Kenya textile industry has already come up to start producing the masks, which is another politics. Uh, I'll ask you about what your opinion is. Uh, Paul says, I believe that Corona has exposed the creative industry. This is the time artists need to have a progressive talk on how to secure themselves economically. Yeah, this is the time. Like, uh, even when we want to have the NHIF, Right now, NHIF as an organization itself is already crumbled, not just for the artists, but uh, for the whole nation. A lot of people are not having uh, uh, health cover because uh, if they already had the database with the hospital that people had selected, then two months ago, when everything came crumbling, they told people to select a new hospital again. And before we know it, the portal was closed. Yet this is something that needs to be ongoing. It's not something that you need to choose a hospital by a particular date. And so right now, people are here the corona crisis is here, and the NHIF is not that very efficient. Those are now the politics of health that we're talking about. With this kind of current crisis, who is going to pay for the health of everyone? Is the government going to pay for everyone in case we get sick or uh, what's really going to happen? But uh, anyway, that's just my thought. Uh, and then uh, uh, Susan, you tell me thing. Uh, uh, can, I reply, can I reply to that one about pain? Yes. I seriously, guys, I think just try your best not to get uh, infected, wash your hands, keep your social distance, because uh, the way things are, you might find out who is going to pay for your costs when it's too late, because at the moment, we, we already know the capacity is low, and uh, it's not good. We, we, for, it's it's going to be tricky, so as much as you can, just try and be safe, because uh, who is going to pay? you might be the one to pay in this country level with the capacities that we have. Yeah. Pay by your life. Pay by your life, not not just pay by your pocket. The, the, this thing is very crazy. Guys, let's stay home. Me, I, I'm, I'm very scared of, of even leaving my gate, leave alone, even my leaving my door. So let's try and keep safe so that if it happens, you say you tried your best. You know, there's that yeah. thing of like, it can happen. But then you yeah. say, at least I tried my best. I stayed at home and this still happened. But yeah. let, let's just try to check uh, the measures how we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Gitimu says, I don't know if it was just a coincidence uh, that a politician was the carrier of the disease and he did not want to be quarantined. And out of his actions, he put the lives of others at risk. And even here, we have seen high-profile Kenyans refusing to isolate and infecting mm -hmm. other people. Yeah, like, uh, was it uh, in, in the coast region? I don't know whether it was Kilifi or uh, Malindi, where this politician came and he met yeah, people... And, Deputy Governor Cliffy County. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, this is this is the kind of this is the leader whom you expect the moment he hears about this news about isolation, he should be the first to isolate himself and tell everybody not to. 
But it goes around still having rallies. And that's why we talk about leadership and sacrifice. Where do we bring about our leadership and sacrifice? Today, Njoki Muhoho was supposed to talk about leadership and sacrifice, but yes. um, technology, uh, steam I'm potter. Kenya Power has um, killed the power in her place since morning. I can see outside. <laughs> <laughs> and so we shall have her another day. Njoki is a very insightful person. She's actually one of my mentors. And so we hope we'll have her again another time. And Amakove, Amakove is learning technology at my pace. So it's just <laughs> I started I started slightly earlier last week. So I am slightly ahead. Like I think we need a one-on-one, -on -one, but we might have yeah. our for another time. But uh, it would have been great to have her. Yeah. The, these things happen. I really understand her because I've been there and today is Amakove's birthday. Oh. So it will have been really lovely to have her on board also. <laughs> can you post, can you post with this Maziwa to her? <laughs> Happy birthday, Cubs. Hope you're watching. Too many electric ideas. Let's hope she's watching, yes. <laughs> yeah. <I'm only> <laughs> So we, we also have here, like, uh, it's sad that uh, we have systems in place, but we are never prepared. When the first nurse was taken to isolation, she was shocked. Here we have a Ministry of Health that receives a lot of money, but we are never prepared. County governments with no ICU beds, we can't produce our own masks. That's a national conversation. I think uh, another, when I look at other WhatsApp forums that we are in, another question that everyone is asking, where is the money that Njoroge, of central bank gave us where has it gone how has it been used before we talk about the loan that's been given to us so those are questions that we're asking ourselves yes there's a health situation at hand but yeah. politically people are playing around with the money that's being given we need accountability at this time uh those were a lot of billions those are not millions billions from uh, the former currency so it's not even money that's need to be accounted for like by the central bank this is money that could have gotten lost but because they are uh, the central bank is very responsible they decided to put this money to our health uh, situation right now but we are not hearing much being given we need people are talking about they need food they need uh, more icu beds and when you also hear that we had icu facilities that were constructed two years ago and right now not even a bed is there then we ask ourselves, what exactly is the politics of health? And uh, we have seen our doctors going on strike because of these same yeah. facilities. And a lot of us have said, let the doctors go back, let work. But right now, we are now seeing why they went on strike. Exactly. And this is, hmm? yeah, I, I, I'm, um, I'm not an expert on leadership, but the fact that uh, I'm led and as a citizen, eh? yeah, there's a there's a guy called Hariri, and he said uh, one of the things that happens during serious crises like that, like this, eh, is that civilization is fast tracked. Society changes rapidly. Yeah. And I hope Africans realize that we have that calling our leaders out to actually serve us because leadership is service. So that when something like this happens, we are prepared. We cannot continue. <coughs> Uh, the politics of choosing our leaders in which we have failed on basis of tribe or basis of whether has someone has a handsome beard or somebody um, looks handsome and uh, all those kind of things. Eh? So that from the moment we choose our leaders, they are leaders who can deliver. And we have to go back to the basics. Health, food, and water. Look at this coronavirus. We have been the health sector is terribly underfunded and it's in ICU itself, so we can't be asking about ICU beds. For, an, for, a, for a health sector that is in the ICU, we are talking about food security. And we are being told the strategic reserves cannot actually sustain us for a while. We are talking about washing our hands, and there are areas in this country. Since I was born, I used to hear water for all in 20, by, 20, by 2000. In 2020, people living in urban Nairobi cannot access clean, healthy water. That speaks volumes about the kind of leaders that we have chosen. And we, once we go through this, let's hope that nature has first tracked us to realize that we will need all our leaders to action so that they can serve us and not serve their own individual selfish needs. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, uh, Simiyu. 
you have really em empowered us today. Uh, you can't even see me. <laughs> it's, it's getting dark, eh? Yeah, no, don't, no power. Don't worry, silhouette lighting is also a cinematic. <laughs> now no, we are ready for you. Sir, thanks. Uh, Cheers and thanks for having me. Uh, cinematic lighting is allowed. That's silhouettes and, you know, backlighting, you know. So uh, it, it works. <laughs> Maybe that's the future of the film industry. <laughs> People might think I'm the, the godfather of Corona. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, so no, we, we th thank you so, so much for your contribution. Uh, today we, we had a very insightful discussion. Our topics were supposed to be the politics of health and uh, leadership and self-sacrifice. We were supposed to have uh, Dr. Makove Wala, uh to talk to us but we we tried at the beginning of the conversation and it really didn't work well for us we hope to have again another time we were also supposed to have uh ambassador Njoki Muhoho, but uh because of unavoidable circumstances we were not able to have her today on time but still we have another week and another week and we shall be doing this as often as we can during the corona crisis we can try have it every week and after that we shall be having the Commonwealth of Film Nights uh, once every month. Of course, we will tell you the location. But for now, we can uh, try at least have these dialogues. I mean, how is film really in helping us initiate this kind of talk, this kind of discussion? Uh, so now uh, we are waiting for Nana. Uh, the moment she is ready, I'll see her on my screen and I'll let her be able to tell us bye. Uh, Simiu, meanwhile, any any final words? We can hear your voice. Oh, can you see my hand? Maybe I'll do I can see the... you very clearly. Just any final words before I log you off as we wait for Nana? Uh, guys, keep safe. Uh, let's follow all the, the procedures to try and make ourselves um, avoid the virus. And let's keep the hope alive. Once we are done with this, let's change our attitude towards leadership, towards healthcare, towards the arts, towards our individual response to everyone and let's be kinder to each other. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Nana, if you're ready, we are ready for you. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Simiu Barasa, I did not introduce you. Uh, Simiu <laughs> Barasa is a, a film director, a very seasoned film director in this industry. He's also a script, script writer. And uh, if you watch Maria, you know, right now, everyone is watching Maria. <laughs> oh. If you watch Maria, he's a scriptwriter of Maria. And uh, he he also did uh, Kizingo. And uh, lastly, last year, they did family meeting with uh, Betty Katungu. Betty Katungu, right. So we shall discuss family meeting this for a month, please. Oh, I'm hearing you hearing me. Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay. Let me log off first. Uh, you see me. Thank you so, so much. And have a lovely quarantine time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. This is a great invitation. <laughs> okay. So, Mama. I have you now. I am live. Thank you, Zippy. <laughs> Another trying day, but we I made it. <laughs> I have you now. Thank you, dear. I am live. Thank you, Zippy. Have, have you opened two two budget? But we uh, made. Hello, Nana. Nana has disappeared from my site again. But I hope she's coming back. She has to tell us bye. <laughs> oh, Marcy, you don't like William anymore. I hope you learn to like him. I don't know which William you're talking about anyway, but um, I hope you do. <laughs> I'm almost, Mama.
Okay. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Yeah. Yes. People want me to be done. So don't worry. Uh, so Nana. <coughs> oh, Masi, you're saying talking about William of uh, Maria. You have. Yeah, William anymore. He will he will find a way to make William a better character. <laughs> you know, scriptwriters have the power to kill a character to make them alive. So you see me, we'll see what to do about that character and their relationship with Maria. Yeah, Nana, right now I can um, I I am not seeing your face. Let me see if I'll be able to see you on the other side. Uh -huh. Yes, people want me to about that character and their relationship with Marianne. Yeah, Nana, right now I can... Uh, I, I am not... Hi, Nana. Kindly try login again. I'll remove this so that you can try linking again so that you can tell us bye because I can't see your face. Okay. Nana, I'm waiting for you. Sweetheart, just keep there at feet. Mommy is coming. Hi, Nana. Are good. Good. Perfect. <laughs> are we yeah. there? Yes, we are here now. Oh, fantastic! So another week. Successful okay. despite everything. I mean, challenges is what we are here to overcome. Every day we wake up, we have to be ready to overcome a challenge. That's the nature of life. Now, this is so uh, overwhelming for me because um, as Commonwealth Business Women Network, when we committed to support women in the film industry, is because we can start an open conversation on leadership, on government, personal, as individuals. And I like the trend that this is taking, bringing in more stakeholders uh, to, you know, to put in a voice in what we are watching, what we are discussing. And it's a movie, yes, but it touches back onto our lives, back into our government, back onto ourselves. And yes, Zippy, we do blame the government, you know, whether you like what they are doing or you don't like what they are doing, the government is doing what it can. And let us not forget that the government is us. The, the government is not an alien entity. We are the government. The government is us. So the government is doing what they are doing. The question for me, from me to you is, what are you doing? First of all, are you doing your part? Mm -hmm. That's a huge challenge we are currently facing. Individuals who think they are above the law, individuals who believe that this pandemic is not serious or they will never catch it or it's another poor man's disease. Mm -hmm. We are beginning to see otherwise. And these egos are going to get us into trouble because the government will not have enough ventilators for all of us. They don't have enough beds. They don't have enough masks. So let's also internalize what our role is in all this. Are we part of the solution or part of the problem? We need to do our part and stay home and stay safe. And as business women, this is an opportunity for growth. This is an opportunity to upscale a skill, to learn a new talent. The whole world is online now. Why not build online networks? Reach out, see what's out there, connect with them. Who knows, by the end of COVID-19, you would have networks across the globe ready to do business with you. Mm -hmm. 
So as opposed to focusing negative energy on what the government is not doing, let's focus internally and ask ourselves, what are we doing? Yeah. What's our part? What role are we playing? Are we being part of the problem or part of the solution? That's one. Secondly is, how are we preparing your, ourselves for post-COVID-19? Because trust me, a lot of people are going to be crying foul on how, you know, we have no money, we have no opportunities because we were all indoors. The yeah. people who are going to make it are people who are using this time to develop themselves and be ready when it's all over to hit the ground healthy, strong, and ready to roll. Mm -hmm. So Zippy, I want to thank you once again. Uh, those who could not join us, not to worry. There's always another opportunity. And trust me, this forum will come back bigger, stronger, and more empowering to all the Commonwealth business women and all the men that we work with and we support each other. Thank you, Zippy. Thank you so, so much. Nana. <laughs> yes. Nana. I, I yes. also want you to mention to the men uh, that uh, our chief uh, executive officer, or is it the executive director, is a male, uh, Azam. <laughs> Tell them so the men can feel yeah. like home. <laughs> Let me say even better than that. Yes, our, our director is a man. But you see, Zippy, by nature of who we are as women, being nurturers, being the ones that give birth to life, we leave no one behind. You've heard that severally. We leave no one behind. The boy child is our child. The girl child is our child. What we are trying to do is get level playing field for girls and women. And trust me, a strong family, united and empowered woman, empowered man, that's a solid foundation for the family, for the community, for the nation and the world. So no, we are not promoting one gender. We are leaving no one behind. Boy child, girl child, dis disabled, people with different abilities, old, young, we are nurturers and we carry everybody along. And the men are more than welcome onto our platform because we value their thought process, we value their input, and we are looking for a level playing field where we can engage as equals. Thank you so, so Thank much. Thank you, <laughs> I'm excited that today we had uh, two men on the platform. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'd just like also to thank all the contributors for today. Indiegu Arigi, thanks for coming in. Uh, on short thank notice. you so much. Yeah. Such rich discussions such yes. insight i've learned quite a lot a lot and that also, i didn't know from the uh, <laughs> film industry from the artists industry yeah we'd also like to thank paul waithaka and we'd like to thank uh, also mwaniki judy and uh, lastly mm -hmm. you barasa thank you so much for coming through and for making oh, this discussion you. very very engaging uh you also saw rachel wainaina susan gitimo mm -hmm. Uh, mm. joined me and quite a number of uh, the people who commented and participated, including mm. Mas and uh, Rosalida. We also had Victor and, and quite a number of people participated. We yeah, like I saw Pauline Warui as well on the discussions. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. yeah. So feel free to share, share this link uh, to other platforms so that more other people can feel empowered. And so that we can be able to be able to discuss and share our thoughts. And uh, let's meet here again on Friday at 5 p.m. And we yep. will be able to pick perhaps now a Kenyan film. Thank you so, so much. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Zippy. Well done. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you too, Nana. <laughs> uh -huh.